Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be giving you a full review of the A-10A Early, a rank six premium American jet that currently sits at 9.7 BR. The A-10A Early comes in a pack that costs $60 USD and includes 2,000 Golden Eagles, 15 days of premium time, and a whole lot of... In this review, I'll be going over the Warthog stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, go over how good I feel that it is in certain categories, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I think that this plane is worth purchasing or not. That said, as always, subscriptions and likes are always incredibly appreciated, but either way, let's get into the video. So to start, I'll place the Warthog stats here on the left side of the screen. Important stats to note here are its top speed, total armament, and cannon. <laughs> And now for how it plays, this is pretty much just going to be a pure close air support aircraft as it was intended when it was originally built in real life. It is one of the rare planes that exists in War Thunder almost purely to take out player controlled enemy ground vehicles, whereas other planes might be more at home in destroying air bases in air RP, such as with the F-105D Thunder Chief. With this said, the A-10 is the ultimate close air support beast and while it is incredibly slow, flying at just around 700 kilometers per hour at very best, and I say this for from my own experience because if you're playing CAS you'll typically start up at an altitude and it's not very difficult to get to 700 kilometers per hour. Uh, you're probably only going to be flying at around 600 give or take if you have any sort of variability in your altitude going up, down, whatever, especially in a dogfight. Even despite its slow speed, the Warthog is still a force to be reckoned with, as it has a ridiculous amount of countermeasures, totaling over 400, and has good maneuverability, as well as excellent AIM-9Ls, of which are all aspect, meaning that you can actually target enemies when you are flying towards them, even though, of course, it only has two of these. This means that if an enemy fighter is overconfident enough to fly down to where you would excel as an A-10 pilot, namely flying low and slow, you have a much better chance of winning in a fight than you probably otherwise should. In much the same way, you have an enormous amount of countermeasures that will allow you to shake nearly all enemy projectiles from you, granted you maneuver successfully. This makes the A-10A early especially deadly against ground targets, as I probably won't have to tell you that high-tier ground RB is insane with SPAA. Whether they're radar-guided cannons or missile-based SPAA or even some sort of hybrid of both, the A-10 has its best performance at sea level and is modeled in-game to be able to withstand a ton of damage, with Gaijin even modeling the famous Titanian tub to be able to protect its pilot. These characteristics, namely its survivability and performance at sea level, combined with its prodigious loadout size, including GBU-8s, which are guided 2,000-pound bombs, of which it can carry four of those, six dumb 2,000-pound bombs, a ton of hydro rockets, AGM, 65Bs, you name it, it will be able to do it, and it is an incredibly effective workhorse that can fly low to avoid missiles, and it does so effectively. Also, if I did not mention, its world world famous GAU-8 rotary cannon has over 100 millimeters of armor pen, meaning that you should be able to destroy nearly all enemy vehicles with relative ease, depending of course on how much armor it has. If you're attacking typical SPAA, you can destroy it with ease with your cannon, whereas an MBT may require shots to the rear or the top of the tank, though these are not necessarily going to be all too difficult to do with a well-maneuvering A-10 Warthog. A quick thing to note is I've had a tough time locking AGM-65Bs during night testing, so you may want to switch to other CAS options in night matches, as the 65B is TV guided compared to the better tracking IR guided 65D. I've also had the same issue with the GBU-8 2,000 pound bombs, which are guided of course at night versus being fine during day matches. Nighttime is the time for dumb ordnance with the A-10A early. Now funny enough, whenever I review planes, I'd like to place their air RB section first in how they play, and then describe how the plane is versus ground second. Now because of the nature of the A-10 Warthog, this is totally reversed with the secondary game mode for the Warthog being Air RB. That said, the Warthog plays Air RB almost similarly to how A4 Skyhawks play, except slower with much more heavy ordnance, and with much better air-to-air -air missiles. Unless Gaijin makes it an air spawn, it will be a tough spot in Air RB, but I can't say that, regardless of if it has air or runway spawn, the A-10A early will essentially always just carry a full bomb load. Try to attack a base, though this might not happen due to nearly every plane far outspeeding it, and then possibly try to deal with enemy 
fighters. Again, Aim 9 L's will help with this, though they are not going to magically turn you into a supersonic turning machine built for air-to-air -air combat, such as a MiG-21. The important thing to realize is that the A-10 is pretty much the doom turtle of the skies, and if you can't successfully dodge enemy fire, or better yet, lure enemies into your territory, you will end up doing well in Air RB. But ultimately, in War Thunder as in real life, the A-10 shines best in situations of air supremacy, when it will not be able to be shot down by intercepting fighters. Unfortunately for you, this is not the case in War Thunder, though it can still do fairly well if you learn the ropes and use its strengths to your advantage. On a side note, if you plan to dogfight with this beast, it does surprisingly well with its 220mm gun pod loadout, again, if you lure enemies to fight you. And now for its strengths and weaknesses, and let me tell you guys, there are many. I've played a ton with the A-10 thus far. For the Warthog's first strength, it has an incredible ordnance load, again, including Hydra rockets, GBU-8s, AGM-65Bs, you name it. And you can even customize these loadouts, at least once they finally add customization to the game, which they said they would, and by the time you watch it, they probably will have. You can carry up to six, again, 2,000-pound dumb bombs, or again, four 2,000-pound TV-guided smart bombs. You can even carry up to 84 Hydro Rockets, two additional 20mm cannons, or again, six AGM-65B Mavericks, with most loadouts having the option to carry AIM-9Ls along with these ground loadouts, which will not limit your total ordnance load, meaning that you should be able to effectively deal with air targets after you clean up the ground. Second, it can carry the excellent, again, AIM-9L air-to-air missiles, which ignore flares pretty darn well. Third, it has surprisingly good maneuverability, especially for a plane built for what it does. Fourth, it has the best cannon, at least in my opinion, and I'm sure in your opinions as well, in all of War Thunder. The 30mm GAU-8 is what dreams are made of for cannon lovers. It's a shame that the A-10 isn't a better dogfighter. Regardless, it can easily dispatch both air and ground targets, regardless of your ammo belt preference, as all of them have penetrating rounds, and all of them have HE shells as well. It also has an incredible amount of countermeasures, coming in at around 480 in total. While you will likely never need to use all of these, it is still a good feeling knowing that you will never need to keep track of your countermeasures during battle, leaving you to be able to use however many of them as you want, or you can just use them to look like fireworks. Following this, it is extremely durable. Between its strong construction and titanium bathtub protecting its pilot, it is one of the most survivable planes in game. For its seventh strength, it has a ballistics computer for all types of ordnance, meaning that you can use it for both bombs and rockets. Eighth, it has access to night vision, which is actually pretty darn cool. And finally, it has premium RP and SL bonuses. Now, for its weaknesses, it is incredibly slow, being slower than most late World War II propeller planes. In fact, it's actually slower than most planes in general. For its second weakness, it has mediocre acceleration and climb rate, meaning that along with its poor top speed, you will be hard pressed to get any kills against enemy fighters unless you force them into fights in your conditions that are favorable to you, such as being again at treetop level and flying slowly. Third, while its engines are indeed sturdy, they are still extremely vulnerable to any enemies that might end up tailing you. For its fourth weakness, it can only carry two AIM-9Ls to the A-10A Late's four AIM-9Ls. In much the same way, the A-10A Late can carry AGM-65Ds, compared to the A-10A Early only getting AGM-65Bs, of which do not track quite as well. And finally, as mentioned before, its smart ordnance, being the Mavericks and GBU-8s, do not work well at night, if at all. Now, with this said, the A-10A is one of the most anticipated planes in War Thunder history, perhaps being only beaten by the F-14 Tomcat, and that's even a little bit debatable. Either way, let's go over if I think that the hype is worth it for the A-10A early, and if this plane is worth purchasing or not. So to start, let's go over some capability rankings for the A-10A early. First, as it is the A-10's forte, let's go over close air support and ground strike first. In this role, I give the A-10A a 9 out of 10. If you can make it through the fur ball, meaning that you either have to have air superiority or air supremacy, whether in ground RB or air RB, the A-10A is amazing. It can use any of its weapons to kill enemies. In air RB, its 2,000 pound loadout can easily destroy two or possibly three bases, if you can make it that far, which is not all too common, whereas the same loadout can destroy huge numbers of enemy tank players in ground RB. You also have the option for six AGM-65B Mavericks, which, while they are not the best, they are still amazing 
amazing and will hit most enemies with a one-shot kill. Even the Hydra rockets are amazing, but of course, you can only use these weapons if you make it to the enemy. For dogfighting, I give it a 3.5 out of 10, with points being given for its excellent AIM-9L missiles, amazing GAU-8 cannon, and surprisingly good maneuverability and energy retention. That said, however, you will still be fighting people regularly that are 2 to 3 times faster than you, which makes this a difficult plane to use as a dogfighter. Though, of course, you can be successful if you force your enemies to fight on your terms, especially if you have the two 20mm cannons or you have two AIM-9Ls only in your loadout, because, of course, if you weigh yourself down down with bombs, you are not going to maneuver nearly as well. That said, to give you an idea of how slow the Thunderbolt 2 is, the P-47 D-22RE, Thunderbolt of World War II fame, of which is among the slowest P-47s in-game and sits at 4.0 BR, is faster, at least per the stat sheet, than the jet-powered Thunderbolt 2. For grinding, I give the A-10A Warthog a 6.5 out of 10, largely because it can grind amazingly well in ground RB, granted you don't get shot down, whereas air RB will only see you hitting bases, of which will be your bread and butter for points, but fairly rarely will you be able to do that because enemies will regularly intercept you before you even get close to hitting the enemy base. Again, in Air RB, you really benefit much more with this plane than almost any other plane in-game from Air Supremacy. This is one of the rare planes that I say is better to grind in for Ground RB than Air RB, largely due to its Ordnance Specialization and Flight Performance. Overall, however, I give the A-10A early a 6.5 out of 10, though this is large based on if you can get through or not. If you can, it's an amazing plane, and honestly, from my experience with it thus far, easily one of the most fun close air support planes in-game, if not the most fun. That cannon is amazing. If you die before you reach your target, which is unfortunately going to happen very often, you might disagree with me there. But I feel that the payoff on the occasional success with this plane is worth the score. Also, I rated dogfighting pretty lightly due to the close air support specialization of this plane, thus why the 3.5 out of 10 score for dogfighting again did not drag it down all that much. Now, despite its obvious shortcomings in terms of speed and in part its air-to-air -air capabilities, the A-10A early is still a surprisingly stout pick for those that know what they're doing. It takes the close air support role to the extreme and foregoes everything else, making this a much friendlier aircraft for advanced players than new ones, as opposed to the much more versatile F-5C or AVAA, both of which offer some cushion for new players with their increased versatility. The A-10A early has has none of that, and while it is an incredibly popular vehicle, you must be wary on if you feel that you are experienced enough to be able to use this plane properly. If used properly, you can easily score air-to-air -air kills in air RB or close air support kills in ground RB. It can do it all, and again, when used properly can be fairly versatile, even if this is not immediately visible in the outset when using the A-10A early. So do I recommend buying this plane? As much as I want to jump on the hype train and say yes, I cannot, though I will not say no. I either. For those that are experienced in close air support or just in planes in general, then the A-10A might be an excellent plane for you, such as what it is for me. If not, then you will likely find yourself repeatedly dying with no successful matches almost ever. In short, I can recommend this plane fairly confidently to those who have experience or even have a good squadron to play with in order to ensure some level of air superiority, whereas I cannot recommend this plane to newer players, as you will be destroyed early and often, more so than almost anyone else in game that has a good amount of experience but still that said thanks so much for watching everyone please like comment and subscribe for more content especially if you enjoyed this video please let me know your thoughts on the warthog below i'm interested to read them either way thanks again and i'll see you all on the other side take care everyone